Hello, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Maker. Um, now you're looking at a sugarcane farm. I'm in my creative world. You can see stuff here. Um, and I decided I needed a, a sugarcane farm, or wanted a sugarcane farm, I guess. No one really needs a sugarcane farm. Um, so I started doing a little research and decided I liked the uh, the mumbo jumbo design it seemed relatively straightforward reasonably easy to build and uh, so I went and I built one here in my creative world and it's got this sort of diamond sort of shape because it uh, it's supposed to the intention was to minimize the amount of drops that sort of sit on the platforms here, like that, and that. I noticed it seemed to leave a few few items on the on the the growing platforms. Whoa! You just saw the pistons go. Um, so yeah, it, it still leaves a few floating here. It's not that big of a deal in an automated farm. Oh, hello, baby. Ah. Oh, you can't hide. Well, you can't. Yeah, you can, I guess. So. Um, so. Yeah. So you can, you can get around that. In an automated farm, who really cares? It's not like you're sitting there and your time is, is the precious commodity. You really, you can, you can get around limitations in efficiency or effectiveness. Um. I guess this would be an efficiency issue just by building more of it so you could just build up keep going the sky's the limit um, so I built up uh, three four five six layers here and started playing around it's built over a square basin of water that flows into the center over a couple lines of hoppers it's a symmetrical design in that each half it's it's symmetrical across the the side here so each half of each layer is a separate module so you can build up as many or as few as you want uh, obviously this uh, build limit is the literal limit uh, but that's quite a ways so so I built up one and the whole thing runs off a hopper timer so it's not trying to do you know block update detection we don't need necessarily need to worry about triggering as soon as the thing grows uh, there's room to let the sugar cane grow up to be three tall, uh, as they will occasionally do. But for the most part, I've got the timer set so that it lets the majority of everything on a given row grow to at least two tall. At least that's the idea. Before it triggers all of the pistons to knock them all off. Like that. Woohoo! So anyway, you can see a couple ended up landing there. And a lot of them went down here and flew into the uh, to the hoppers. So it uses this square basin because that's a convenient shape. But it, it dawned on me that because it's diagonal, you're only getting like the square root of two, you know, the inverse of the square root of two. Uh, it's uh, you're getting the diagonals on the sides. And you're wasting the corners here and because of the and it may be a change with the snapshots but it, because of the the number of items that still end up on the ledges I was wondering if this really solves the issue or if the snapshot changed something that made this less useful uh, a, a way to try and avoid wastage of drops like this so Come on. Thank you. So I decided to do a little test, do some science, and I built a square one. Well, hello, Mr. Creeper. Please get off my science experiment. Thank you. So I built a square one. So using up the entirety of the sides, 
and yes drops end up sitting on the ledge that's gonna happen with either design but the the goal was to see if I could figure out um, whether or not this was more efficient than the other a more efficient use of the footprint because this uses up the entirety of the footprint whereas this only uses a portion of it so this is also requires more resources for each layer it's 2.25 times as many hoppers and sugarcane sugar cane plants so i wanted to see if we could time it and figure out if over time this collected more than 2.25 times the number of sugarcane drops as this one it would be worth it because the resources would be paying for themselves uh, more than the number of resources if this for instance only collected one and a half or two times as many sugarcane drops as this then this would be more efficient let me show you how it's all being driven so i've got a hopper clock down here it's just the standard etho hopper clock which is a really handy device and i've got a bunch of sugar cane since i have i am in creative mode i could be meta if i want so this this uh, redstone block keeps getting passed back and forth and when it does it powers this redstone dust over here and here which then inverts and creates a uh, and sort of powers this guy and um, actually the, both redstone dusts are on most of the time it's a um, it, it changes in intensity and it gets to a point uh, when there's a change it basically sends out a it flickers this torch which then this is a little pull this is a little pulse generator it's an item hopper that has one item hopper feeding into a dropper pointing up has one item in it when it gets a signal from here it pops up and it temporarily um or yeah temporarily turns off this comparator which turns off this repeater and it causes all these torches to change state and all the torches go up here and power all the uh, the pistons it's pretty it's pretty simple and then i run a line over on this side and with a repeater to do the same thing over here for simplicity of build i have two clocks on this one but they're both set up identically so this one handles these two sides and this one over here handles these two sides so it works pretty well oh got some experience go get that oh look at that and i also put uh, ice underneath the water so the items flow really quickly uh, it's kind of pretty i also played around with uh, putting them all going into a central hole like this it works just as well uh, playing around with trying to get different designs to minimize the corner problem because you can't put source blocks all the way into the corner otherwise the whole thing turns into a lake it's no good um, the cool thing here is if I take uh, a bunch of something whoops whoa it's not what I wanted to show you but it was almost let's put it into an actual slot and uh, and if I throw it here at an angle they kind of curve around it's if you put a little angular momentum on them they kind of spiral in as they go as they go down the drain yeah like that it's pretty cool it's amazing how fast they run with the ice under there the only problem with the ice under there oh and with this particular arrangement i have one block in the corner I start off putting four blocks in the corner placed water source blocks along each side between them took out three of the blocks did not put in a source block in either of these two and then put a source block on top of this guy leaving this block in place and this gets rid of all the nodes there's no there's no place here where um, an item can get stuck even if you drop it into the corner back here it still gets sucked out into the stream and, and runs away and of course if it drops up top it gets pushed down and gets runs out so this works pretty well and it's relatively minimal you only need an extra height there 
So, but anyway, not using that design. I could. Um, oh, and actually, I mean, I have a full hopper chain in here. And then I'm playing around with uh, longer designs. Basically, you could extend this in one direction using this the hopper chain down the center approach without having to worry about the corners. And you could extend it to be like 30 long. Um, you just need two um, redstone uh, torch ladders on each of the long sides. And then the short side uh, can run with one each. So you need six total sets of uh, essentially individual sets of of pistons anyway so let's go look I reset this before I started recording it may not be long enough but I just wanted to show you so you didn't have to take my word for it uh, so this guy has one stack plus seven 1.1 1 .1 stack and this guy has two two and a quarter stacks um, so we'll let this run a bit bit longer but uh, I have done some extensive testing with this and this design is about <sighs> delivers about two and a half times the drops of this design so this is what I'm gonna end up building um, oh yeah I didn't build originally with this but I'm gonna put glowstone or pumpkins in inside here because Keep getting mobs uh, spawning along here and I originally tried putting torches which works works nicely the problem is is that it prevents the sugar cane from growing up taller than two and on occasion because it's a random thing they will try and this will actually limit these torches here will limit the uh, the drop efficiency of these three sides here so um, so yeah, so when I build it, when I go back and build in my survival world, I am going to include, uh, probably pumpkins. I don't have enough glowstone to do this properly yet. And I'll probably just build one layer and then, you know, build up from there, uh, as I can. Okay. Let's see. Is there anything else I need to show you in this, uh, creative world? Oh, stupid rain. Um, oh, yeah, so I was testing here just to make sure that with the glowstone in place, it would indeed grow. Of course, I expected it to. Um, playing around here with hopper clock. Chanting. This little automated farm using a villager because in the farmer villagers in 1.8 will, uh, will farm for you. So they will actually go around and when this stuff grows, he'll go when this stuff's ready to pick like this, when he sees it. Hey dude, wake up, wake up. Oh, I know, you're all alone here. Okay, so when he sees this, he'll come over and pick it. And, uh, and he'll end up dropping the wheat and the seeds on the ground because his pockets are full and oh he just did it i was impatient and i've got a little minecart hopper minecart going under here and it, it periodically pops in here and uh, drops all the seeds and wheat over here which is pretty cool so it's an automated wheat farm not that i need this much wheat but it's uh it was still fun to play with um this was testing the transparency bug um, of lava and water which has been fixed I'm trying to design a chicken farm that will work because chicken farms are currently not working super well um, and uh, I was playing around with this as a automated somewhat automated um, cow farm but this is kind of broken now too the cows keep glitching out whoops so uh, but the idea is you know uh, I think I saw I think I saw cub fan do this on in his in his series 
So they'll make little babies, they'll come down here, and when they grow up, because they, the cows stand on top of the fences, and alternating fences and nether, nether fences here, and then these cows will grow up, and when they get big enough, you hit this button, and it sets them on fire. And they make awful noises. Um, those guys won't drop anything, but the, the adults, of course, drop when they die from fire they will drop steaks and they'll drop leather so that's uh somewhat convenient so i was playing around with that the uh the fire design here and trying to figure out exactly why it works and what this piece of it is doing here it's it's setting off this row of redstone twice once from this repeater powering this block and then once from I think the delay on this guy is important and then it powers this block which then powers these guys but I'm not I'm not 100% certain on that and then I'm also building um, I'm damming up the river that runs by my house and I want to build an underground railroad but I wanted to do it out of glass and I was playing with different glass colors to see what interacted with the water when I placed it back on top best and I think the blue glass does so so anyway this was just a little test to see what that would look like underwater but that's uh that's what's going on here in my creative world something happened something bad happened here and I don't know what um, I'm wondering if lightning lightning struck a creeper and he somehow you know became a charge creeper and then somehow he exploded I don't know or lightning hit it and it partially burned down this makes me worry a little bit about my uh, cactus farm in my uh, in my survival world I don't know I don't have enough clay to go rebuild the entire outside out of clay so I don't know Oh, there is one more thing here. Sorry. I built this room. I built the room. I want to play with lighting a little bit. And uh, I built a room. I wanted to prove to myself how um, slabs block out light. And they also prevent mobs from seeing you. So I, I left that side of the room completely dark. Doors do not block light. Um, light shines through doors just like anything. What are these guys obsessed? They must be seeing that villager over there. Anyway, so I left that side of the room completely unlit. And the light trap passage on the outside is enough so that the light is zero on this block that the two zombies are standing on. So they can spawn and things can spawn inside here. And these guys can't see me. I mean, I'm in in uh, creative, but they don't uh, they don't see me at all. But I can hit them. So this side of the room I lit up super bright, and if I go into the other side over there, it, it's pretty funny because you can see all the lighting. In fact, let's do that. Ah, hey. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hi, dudes. Okay, let's get rid of my... So this side of the room is completely dark. And that side of the room is completely light. And you can see it. It's pretty funny. Um, and I think I have... My brightness set too moody. Yeah, so this is like worst case scenario. But anyway, I just wanted to show, wanted to prove to myself that the light, it goes onto the half slabs, but it does not go past. Pretty funny. Anyway, um, I think there's a button up here. There we go. Ah! All right. Okay, so... That's that. I just wanted to show you the uh, sugarcane farm. And the reason I want to build a sugarcane farm 
will become obvious in a moment. So I'm going to quit out of here. Well, let's go check one more time before we leave. So almost two stacks here, 64 plus 51. Let's, uh, and here we have four stacks and some. So as you can see, this one's being quite a bit, the square one's quite a bit more productive. So this is the winning design. Um, unless I find something else, but uh, this is the what I'm gonna build. And I will probably build a square like this. Um, maybe, I don't know. I'm strongly contemplating doing it longer just because with the water flowing into the center, like the center line like this, I can, but we'll see.